Many, many years ago, I lived here in San Francisco in a log cabin. <laughs> and I'd write my jokes by the light of the fireplace. <laughs> Two Latina lesbians walk into a taqueria. <laughs> In the 80s, that killed. <laughs> People would come to me with their poor health, and I'd relieve them of their sickness by taking my walking stick, and I would whack them on the hand, and they would scream, I, my hand! And I'd say, well, your headache's gone. <laughs> Take my wife, por favor. <laughs> but I want to tell you, ladies and germs, comedy cures all ills. Spring, semester, 1979. I'm a sophomore at Chico State University in Northern California. I'm an art major, and I'm also taking fiction writing courses. I have a boyfriend. He's a nice guy, but I'm not putting out anymore. I can't. I'm giving him a hand job with a spatula. <laughs> and that's wrong. <laughs> For months, I'm confused, depressed, tripped out about my sexual identity. One night to lift my spirits, I drop acid. Paper acid. No one tells me I just need a tea. I eat the whole sheet. Yes. Yes. And after endless hours of diabolic hallucinations, I just swallow the solar system. Doesn't anybody care? I black out. Many hours later, I'm awakened by the cool breeze. I fall asleep on the street. But it brings me clarity. And I stand up, and I start to beat my chest, shouting, City of Chico, approximately 90 miles north of Sacramento, east of Interstate 5, I'm pretty sure I'm a lesbian. <laughs> yeah, I'm a lesbian. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise be to Raquel Welch. <laughs> I'm a lesbian. I feel free, relieved. I break up with a boyfriend, finish the semester, and I hightail it back to my hometown of San Jose. And that summer, I know I must raise my queer consciousness. I get naked with a girl. And it feels real good being a lady homo. <laughs> I soon moved to Oakland. Hey, let's hear it for Oakland. change my major, I become a very serious film student. Can you show us my Chico State ID card, please? Oh. So innocent. Am I, am I into men? Am I into women? Do I like raccoons? I'm so confused. Now show us my San Francisco State ID card, please. Whoa. into the dyke dew, the mullet. I'm wearing a red bandana around my neck. That is so gay. 
Red symbolizing I'm into taquitos <laughs> and witchcraft. <laughs> I love being a student at San Francisco State. One of the highlights is Angela Davis is yeah. teaching on campus. Yeah. Yes. And I want to talk to her, take a course from her, but I can't figure it out because I'm so immersed in cinema. I'm obsessed with film noir. I'm always fantasizing about making a movie featuring a lesbian detective, 1940s, and calling it Blanca Ramirez. Butch? Dick. <laughs> Private detective. <laughs> I'm gonna do whatever it takes to find your husband's killer, sweetheart. <laughs> Thank you, Detective Ramirez. Your name sounds like a delicious Mexican dessert. <laughs> Take a bite out of me, well, go right ahead. <laughs> go ahead, bite me. Blanca Ramirez, butch dick. Private detective. I'm still, uh, fantasizing about making that move. Yes. Even though I live in Oakland, I'm always in San Francisco, experiencing this big city, exploring many new things. Two things stand out. One, there are a lot of gay people here. Wow! And they're very affectionate with each other. And two, taquerias. Taquerias, and I'm here in Taqueria Landia. Taqueria La Cumbre, Andalencia, is my first. Delicious Mexican food made right before my eyes. I'm in heaven. The women making the comida behind the counter all have attitude. They treat me so bad. <laughs> it's such a turn on, yeah! <laughs> Give it to me, baby! <laughs> I, I place my order. I like a vegetarian burrito, no sour cream, por favor. <laughs> they all roll their eyes and mumble to each other. Esta pocha. Ella es una dum dum. <laughs> There's this one woman who regularly and reluctantly makes my burrito. She looks like the Mexican icon actress Maria Felix with her dramatic stare and her perfect eyebrows that say, come close, but no touchy. And after she piles on and shapes and rolls up my arroz, frijoles, guacamole into the tortilla, this circular food skin, this woman, this she-devil of the kitchen, nods her head and utters with defiance, to go? Practically kicking me out the door, assuming I don't have the ganas to eat my burrito inside her sacred taqueria. Oh no, I'm not leaving. I want you to watch me eat it here. <laughs> but first, I want you to take my burrito that's in your hand, and I want you to rub it into your armpit. Oh, yeah, like that. Oh, yeah. And then I want you to rub it all over your Chi-chi muy grande! Chi-chi! Then I want you to push it. Push it good. Push it real good. Push it down. Down, down. Into your pan dulce. Dale duro! Echale ganas! I want you to taste your
your muhetness, <laughs> your maliche magnificence, <laughs> your Yonona transcendence, <laughs> your V in the Guadalupe, Mexico! <laughs> see? See? Yeah? Yeah? Armpit! Gee! Gee, Padusa! Armpit! On this one occasion, we're meeting our friend Susan, who's excited to introduce us to her new girlfriend, Ellen. She's a comedian. She's got that all-American look with her blonde hair and blue eyes. Later that night, we see Ellen perform at a comedy club, and uh, she kills. I applaud her, but I also think, one day, I'm going to be on that stage, and I'm going to make people laugh. I keep this thought to myself like I have since high school. Besides uh, cruising chicks at taquerias, <laughs> my sister and I go to women's bars. There's uh, Amelia's on Valencia, Mods in Coal Valley, Woo! the Bay Brick Inn south of Market, and uh, a little more at Petrero. <laughs> the running joke is uh, we're going to a little more for a little less. <laughs> that's what we say. <laughs> that's what we get. <laughs> I don't know where to go there. <laughs> Going to lesbian bars requires three things. Hair products, attitude, and shoulder pads so why you can fly. Once we get to the clubs, I lose myself in the hypnotic dyke tunes. And I wait for the magic to happen. Yeah, we, yeah, really, yeah, we, you know. Oh, you don't want to dance with me. Uh, oh, you want to kill me. Okay, maybe later. <laughs> I hope she's here tonight. I don't want to go home alone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. Really? Okay, if that's what you want. Do me, do me. Again? All right. Yeah, okay. Oh, too much. <laughs> Too soon. Okay. Okay. I uh, I call that charisma. <laughs> the clinic calls it chlamydia. <laughs> oh well. Although I'm being social, most of my time is spent on my studies. For one of my film assignments, I make a short black and white documentary about a popular San Francisco comedian, Kit Hollerbach. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised she says yes. I hang out with Kit at the comedy clubs. She introduces me to her comedian friends. She even invites me to her apartment for lunch. I love this project, I'm thrilled. But I play it cool, and I never share with her that I want to try stand-up comedy. That little voice that's been in the back of my head since high school is now shouting, Set up comedy, come on, do it, do it. You know you want to do it. Get on that stage. To calm the voice down, I go to comedy clubs by myself, and I hang out in the back, and I observe the comedians doing their every moves, how they walk on stage, how they grab the mic, or they leave it on the stand, what the men talk about and what the women talk about, and I tell myself, I can do that. I am funnier. I create a five-minute routine that I work on all the time. 
For a microphone, I use my mom's tortilla rolling pin. <laughs> I don't know this at the time, but my cultura will always be at the foundation of my creative work. And I'm rasguache. Rasguache, Google that. <laughs> I think my microphone is falling off. Is that okay? Is it okay? Okay. All right, great. Um, I practice in front of the mirror, in front of my sister, or I go to my parents' house and practice on them. Hey, Mom, how you doing? Where are you from? <laughs> hey, Dad, who gave you that haircut? A squirrel? <laughs> Tia Cocha, stop spilling the wine. From church. <laughs> Two, Latina, lesbians, walk into a taqueria. Anybody? <laughs> and I practice this over and over and over and over until I need to go on stage. I need a live audience. I get myself booked at an open mic night at the other cafe comedy club in San Francisco, the same club where I first see Ellen perform. I got to look good, so I get myself a new outfit. I groom the mullet. I shave. <laughs> I look handsome. Okay, so I'm dressed like the group, the Commodores. <laughs> Who was it? I'm number 15 out of 20 comics, but I don't care. I waited a long time for this moment. Comedian Rob Becker introduces me, and I step on stage with nervous confidence, and I do a solid five minutes. I don't refer to my nationality or my sexuality. I just focus on funny, silly. I get a decent amount of laughs and applause, and I hear myself say, thank you, good night. And I'm not in front of my bathroom mirror holding my mom's tortilla rolling pin. I'm in a real comedy club. I step off stage, half 